Many of you have probably heard about this study that came out last week that suggested that the overall population of birds in the United States and Canada has declined by almost 3 billion birds or about 30% since the year 1970. This is super sad and also fairly alarming because birds are very important to humans in many different ways. But the truth is you have to be optimistic and in this video I'm gonna give you 12 different ways how you can help save birds coming up right after this. Hi guys, my name is Eddie. I'm a biologist and on this channel I teach you how to enjoy nature. That includes how to find, photograph, and identify wildlife. But there's also a big science and conservation component to this too, which is really the focus of this video. So this study that came out last week that was published in the prestigious journal Science has shown about a 30% decline in North America's bird abundance. Some of the hardest hit birds were grassland birds, migratory songbirds. There are lots of different causes of the overall decline of birds in North America. Some of the major causes have been habitat loss, free roaming cats, collisions with buildings, pesticides, and a decline in their food sources, in particular a decline in insects. And of course, as you might have guessed, climate change can significantly aggravate some of these problems as well. This study was only done for the United States and Canada, but birds all over the world are in trouble everywhere. Most of the species found in the world can be found in the tropics. Maybe it is the tropics that we should be most concerned about bird extinctions. However, this study has done a really good job on raising awareness of the conservation status of birds right here in North America. So whether you are just a general nature lover or a dedicated birder, I know that many people all over the world want to know some way that they can help birds. So these 12 tips should help you make a positive impact on the conservation of birds no matter where you live in the world. And be sure you watch until the end because in my opinion, the last tip that I give is the most important tip out of all of them. My first tip is to reduce pesticide use. Well, pesticides can be harmful to birds either directly, just through direct contact to the birds themselves, or birds can also ingest pesticides through the prey that they eat. More than one billion pounds of pesticides are used in the United States every year. Not only can pesticides directly kill birds, but they can also cause some other longer ranging health effects. For example, neurological effects and the thinning of their eggshells. One thing you can do is try purchasing organic foods in which these pesticides aren't used. In all honesty, is the large scale of commercial use of pesticides that has the biggest impact, but also you can try to reduce your own personal pesticide use around your own home and garden. For example, glyphosate, which is used in Roundup, can be toxic to birds. My second tip to help birds is to reduce your use of plastic. Studies have shown that over 90% of plastics are not recycled. There's over 4.9 billion metric tons of plastics in landfills around the world. A lot of plastic ends up in the oceans where birds and other sea creatures ingest it. Everyone has seen those terrifying photos in which people have found things like cigarette lighters, toothbrushes inside the stomachs of sea birds and other sea creatures. So how can you actually reduce your use of plastics? Well, try not to use one-time use plastics like bags, bottles, disposable utensils. It's just far better to choose reusable items. And if you really wanna take it a step further, advocate for a ban on things like bags, styrofoam, and straws. My third tip is to create bird habitat in your backyard and surrounding community. As we all know, habitat destruction is a major factor in the decline of bird populations. Anywhere you have grass lawn, try to replace it with native plants. And it's empirically shown that native plants are much better than exotic plants. The higher diversity of native plants you have, the more diversity of birds you might have to come to your yard. For example, you should try to have plants with fruits, you should try to have plants with nectar. Be sure to have plants with habitat and nesting materials. For wherever you live in the world, just do research on what native plants you should plant to enhance bird habitat. You can also put up bird boxes to provide structures for birds to nest in and provide them with water because birds need water as well. My next tip is simply to feed birds, especially in winter time. The more food you can provide birds, the more likely they're gonna survive. Of course, only a number of birds are feeder birds. There's been some people that have argued whether 
whether feeding birds is actually good or not. That's a completely different conversation that I'll make another video on, but I would say overall, setting up a bird feeder for birds is good for birds and good for bird conservation. So I suggest setting up different types of feeders with different types of bird seed. Uh, you can set up fruit for birds who like to eat fruit. You can make sugar water and set up hummingbird feeders for hummingbirds. If you have a backyard in North America, there really is no excuse why you can't have a bird feeder as long as you can afford it and unless you're like unbelievably busy in your life there really is no excuse why you can't have a bird feeder in your yard my fifth tip is to do citizen science everyone has heard of eBird just in case you haven't heard of eBird eBird is this online citizen science database where you can enter in all of your bird sightings online it's tagged geographically and people all over the globe have contributed to this database and it's been very helpful for scientists to use this data to make conclusions about bird conservation like this study that just came out last week. This information is very valuable for individual species especially because for example the passenger pigeon was at one point an extremely common bird. Its numbers were decreasing very very fast and no one had any idea and then all of a sudden it went extinct. But if they would have had a citizen science system like eBird to actually track the numbers of the passenger pigeon back then I mean, maybe we could have saved the passenger pigeon before it was too late. That's why it's really important that when you go out there and go recreational bird watching, enter your data into eBird. And there's also a lot of other special days that you can participate in too, like there's the global backyard bird count, there's the global big day. My sixth tip is to keep your cats inside. There was a new study that came out that said that over 150 million cats whether they're feral or domestic, are living outside in the United States today, and they are killing up to 3.7 billion birds per year. After habitat loss, this is the next biggest reason why birds are declining in North America. Um, maybe you can make sort of what they call a catio, which is like sort of like an outdoor screen and porch for your cat if you want to give your cat some fresh air. But just don't let them roam outside because there is a really good chance your cat is going to kill a bird. My seventh tip is to don't buy products that destroy bird habitat. So for example, many people have heard about palm oil and in many places in the tropics, palm oil farms are destroying tropical rainforests. That of course is destroying habitat for birds and many other kinds of wildlife. Palm oil is a substance that can be found in many products that you can buy at the store. Also, if you're gonna eat beef, which actually for larger environmental reasons, not just for birds, I would suggest not consuming any beef at all. But if you are gonna eat beef, try to buy grass-fed beef because if it's grass-fed, uh, that means that potentially some grassland birds can actually live in sort of that agricultural ecosystem with the livestock. Normal commercialized beef is fed corn, it's fed soy, and that is from another commercialized farm where grassland bird habitat has most likely been wiped out. And like I said earlier, some of the birds that have declined the most in North America are actually grassland birds. And also, if you are going to consume coffee, try to consume coffee that is shade grown coffee and not sun grown coffee. Apparently three quarters of the coffee grown in the world is what you call sun grown coffee where it's just all coffee plants and no trees are growing above it. And in that case, a lot more habitat for birds is destroyed than shade grown coffee, which is where you have a coffee plantation and there are actually trees growing within the coffee plantation. And there's actually a canopy above the coffee that's growing, which provides more habitat for birds to live. And I will say that when you buy things at the store for your everyday convenience, it is really hard to be thinking the whole time about things like, wow, how am I affecting the birds? How am I affecting wildlife? How am I affecting the environment in general? A lot of times it's way more complicated and you just can't really tell just by looking at the package. But I see the biggest benefit of having this mentality is that you are reasserting environmental awareness on yourself so that when you're faced with other decisions that really impact the environment more, you're gonna make the right decision there, uh, which I'm gonna talk about more with my last tip. My next tip is to make your windows safer. Up to 1 billion birds die each year in the United States and Canada just from flying straight into windows. During the day, birds perceive the reflection just as open space to fly through. 
And then at nighttime, birds are actually attracted to the light coming out of windows. So they're more likely to fly around buildings and then they'll fly into a building and they'll die. Now, one way to try to prevent this problem is on the outside of the window, install a screen. So at least if the bird flies in in the screen, it's not gonna be as hard a collision as when it flies into a window. Another thing you can do too is put certain designs on the window to break up the reflection. And of course, at nighttime, turn off your lights. My next tip to help save birds is to reduce your carbon footprint, which I'm not gonna go into all the methods of how you can reduce your carbon footprint. Global climate change is a gigantic issue that affects many different people, the natural world in many different ways. You know, obviously if you ride a bike instead of drive a car somewhere, it's gonna reduce your carbon footprint. But I think it's just really important to note that climate change is significantly affecting birds in lots of different ways all around the world. One great example is when birds migrate, when they've arrived to their destination, oftentimes they will depend on the timing of their availability of food sources. So for example, on the timing of when flowers bloom or when fruits are available. And if the climate has changed and shifted that timing, those food sources won't be available for birds. So remember, you gotta do everything you can to help fight climate change and reducing your carbon footprint technically is one way that you're doing it and helping birds. Another tip I have is to just donate money to conservation organizations. For example, the Audubon is a great one. It just is a really good direct way to help birds. You're just putting money towards various things like research, education, um, habitat management. And even if it's just a little bit of money, it's still a little bit that goes to helping birds. So definitely click on one of those links below. And even if it's just $1 to one of those places, go ahead and make a donation. At least it'll make you feel better for the day, right? My second to last tip is to teach others about birds and bird conservation. Now, you can do this just by word of mouth, by telling people stories about birds, by bringing them out into the field with you and looking at birds and observing them, inspiring them that way, which I think might be the best way. Um, however, with social media, we are very lucky now to have a platform where we can spread a positive message. I know that there's pros and cons about social media and social media has definitely transformed our society, but I really do believe that you have to use social media for the better. And if it means spreading a positive message about environmental conservation, then you should definitely do that. So, you know, take pictures of birds, post them on social media, show some enthusiasm with how much you love birds in the text of your post. Also share articles about conservation, whether it's from National Geographic or anything else. I know that there's a lot of bad things that are spread on social media, but there's also a lot of good things too. And it's really a good way to just inform people about important issues. For example, the study on the decline of North American birds that I talked about at the beginning of this video, I'm not sure that many people would have really found out about it if it wasn't for social media, if there weren't so many websites sharing this article across various social media platforms, I'm really not sure that many people would have really known about this. And now here's to my last tip, which is, I think by far my most important tip. And that is that you have to pay attention to politics. You have to vote for the politicians who are gonna save birds and other wildlife and the environment, of course. And you have to press them to make sure that they actually implement those policies. Now, why is this the most important tip? It's because policy controls everything. It doesn't matter what you do as an individual if there are no laws that control the destruction of the environment. It just doesn't. If you follow the other tips I gave in this video, I'm not gonna say that you're not gonna make any difference. Uh, the reason why I gave these tips in this video is because I truly do believe you can make a small difference by playing your part. However, none of it really matters if the correct political policies are not in place. So let's say your yard is about an acre big and you've done your best to plant all of these native plants. You have bird baths, you have bird feeders, and lots of birds have come to your, to your yard to make it their home. That's awesome. I truly believe that you're helping native birds. However, let's say that there's another plot of land down the street. Let's say there's 2,000 acres and there's no laws restricting a company from just destroying that land completely for whatever reason. I think that's a good example that shows that environmental policy is way more important than what you do individually. I think that that study that came out last week actually helps me illustrate my point. The study showed that, yeah, overall bird populations in North America have decreased, but there were some types of birds whose, whose populations increased. Those were raptors, 
and waterfowl. What they attributed to those populations increasing is policies that were implemented that helped those birds specifically. For the bald eagle, for example, the big thing that helped numbers of the bald eagle was a ban on the pesticide DDT, which was really affecting its life cycle, affecting the thickness of its eggshells. For waterfowl, the policies that were implemented actually were originally for hunting. Hunters wanted more sustainable populations, so they would be able to recreationally hunt waterfowl in the long term. My point is, is that the only types of birds that saw significant rises in their population numbers were birds in which policies were implemented to help them. And just in case you do not know, since our current president took office, there have been two very important policies relating specifically to birds that have been changed. One of them is the Endangered Species Act. The other one is the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Now, I'm not gonna go too much into depth about what was changed, but I would argue that they've essentially been dismantled. And both of those policies have been really important when it's come to protecting birds in the United States, in North America, uh, for a long period of time. So it seems like these policies weren't enough to keep bird populations from declining in the first place, and yet they're repealed anyways so yeah, our current policies right now are really bad for the conservation of birds. Now this doesn't only go for the federal level. You can't just forget who your state representatives are, who your local representatives are in the government, because all levels of government matter when it comes to bird and wildlife conservation. Now I'm not saying you should vote only to save birds or wildlife. I know that there are many reasons why you should vote for a political candidate, but you should also know that at least in the United States, the politicians that are rolling back regulations that help protect birds are also rolling back all kinds of environmental regulations that actually protect the entire natural world and humans as well. For example, we have politicians in power right now who just don't believe that climate change is a significant problem. And again, that's gonna affect birds, but also going to affect us. So guys, I hope that this video provided you with some useful information. I hope that you get out there and do your best to save birds, save the environment as a whole, and also save ourselves.